Hey loves, this is Bobby, and I'm here with another vlog. And this will be vlog number 42. And I had a pretty productive reading week, as you'll see. Um, I read some awesome books. I got a five-star book this week, which is always great. And I cannot wait to get into the rest of that series because I loved it so much. So I will catch up with you at the end of the week. Bye. This is going to be the last vlog for the Tropical Readathon. And I'm trying to get in the last of my books. Um, today is Tuesday, which is my Monday at work. Um, started off already a really great week. Um, as you know, I finished all of the books that I wanted to last week, which was great. Um, I started Sorcery of Thorns today. I did the audiobook. I finished this at work and I absolutely loved it. Oh my goodness, I couldn't get over how much I just enjoyed this. Everything about this was just wonderful. I loved the characters. I loved the plot. I loved the world. I, I'm going to say it again. I love the characters. This is the first time in a while where I've literally fell in love with every single character. Um, all three of our kind of main characters were wonderful. This had a great friendship. This had like twists and turns and just absolutely about this was wonderful. Um, I was originally going to go with four stars, but actually thinking about it, I'm going to put this down as a five because I have zero complaints about it. It got a little slow in the middle, but it was nothing that I noticed too bad. It was still great. I was kind of just more excited to like get back into everything. Um, also, this is the first time in a while where I absolutely adored the romance in it. I thought the main couple, Elizabeth and Nathaniel, were just absolutely wonderful together. I loved the back and forth. Um, I liked that, you know, it wasn't just like full on insta love right away. You know, there was the attraction, but it built up over time. My uh, favorite character though was Silas. I just absolutely fell in love with the character. He was wonderful. I loved the dynamic of the three of them together. Um, everything about this though is just wonderful. I loved the world with how these books are like alive and they have their own distinct personalities. Um, I didn't know what this was about at all when I bought it or when I started reading it. Um, I picked this up for the enemies to lovers. Um, and it's been on my shelf for about a year now. Everyone was talking about it and I was just, it didn't seem like something that I was like super keen on. Um, I heard nothing but really good things about it for the most part in the beginning and then a couple people, you know, oh, but it just didn't seem like, it, it just seemed like a typical YA fantasy, like nothing really stood out about it to me. Um, so I put it down, I never really picked it up and now I'm really mad because I just absolutely adored it. Like I said, the characters were great. Um, I probably should talk about what this book is about. Um, we follow the story of a girl named Elizabeth who she is training to be basically a librarian. But in this world, books um, are grimoires. They actually have their own personalities. They kind of come alive and everything. Um, and she was raised in this library. Um, most orphans are the ones that are able to actually full on become the guardians of the library. They're all orphans. Um, most of them are brought in when they're a little older. She was actually left on the doorstep of it and she was raised there. Um, and then someone lets out this really dangerous grimoire and she's framed for it and she has to kind of find her way back to try and figure out what is actually happening, who did this, and she meets this sorcerer who he, um, that's Nathaniel, um, he has a deal with a demon who is Silas and to make a deal he has to barter parts, um, like years of his life. And that is how they have, like, this connection. And when she first meets him, he comes to the library to do some research. And right away, they kind of, like, pick at each other. It's just really fun. I loved the romance. It wasn't unhealthy for once, thank goodness. Um, there were They saw each other as equals, which I freaking loved. Um, it was really fun. I just adored everything about it, though. This was just great. I loved the world. Um... There was quite a bit of a plot twist almost to this world because I wasn't expecting, like I said, I didn't know anything that was going on in this. 
Um, so when we find ourselves outside of the library into like the, you know, outside world, I was really kind of like taken back by it. And I loved it, but like sorcerers, like having deals with a demon aren't exactly rare. So that was a cool aspect, but I loved the character of Silas. Um, the audiobook was phenomenal. The um, narrator was wonderful. Her voice for Silas, though, is just like everything of what a demon voice should be. Like one that's kind of cunning and stuff. And I just, I love this. I, if you haven't read this, which I know pretty much everybody has, um, definitely, definitely pick it up. Um, it was just a really good YA fantasy, fast paced. This is a standalone. Um, the ending leaves you kind of like, what? There's no more. But it was also a really good ending. Like it was, if the author ever decided to write another one, I would 100% pick it up. But if that's where we are left off on, I'm 100% happy with it. I thought it was great. It was just everything about it was just so much fun. Um, I know the author has another book, um, Enchant Enchantment of Ravens or something like that. I want to pick it up now. I never picked it up. Um, so I want to read it. I might, I don't know if I'll buy it or not, but I'll definitely do the audiobook because I really like the audiobook for this one. So yeah, great book. I loved it and I finished it. So there we go. I started off my week already finishing a book. Um, I have made a little more progress on a map of days. I've picked it up. Um, I need to finish this one. I'm doing this one physically. So this is my physical book for the week, but I also have to read, um, God, Gods of Jade and Shadow physically because I cannot get an audiobook for it, and I am, like, very adamant on not buying audiobooks when I have a physical. Like, if I can get it from the library, okay, that's fine. But I will not buy an audiobook, because if I own the physical book, there's literally no reason for me to do that. It's bad enough that I keep listening to audiobooks for books I already own. So, I'm reading this one physically, and I gotta get this one. Um, I had a busy day today, so I didn't have a chance to do really any reading. I read a bit when I was on my way home, so I'm still not very far into this. But I know once I sit down and actually just read it, um, I think Thursday I should have a absolutely nothing to do day at work. So that's when I'm going to try and crack this one out as much as I can. But from today to then, I am going to be reading it. Um, so there we go for what I did today. Um, my next audiobook, I am going to do The Lies of Locke Lamora. I am very, very excited for that one. I have been putting, well, I was waiting for my audiobook hold, and then when I did get it, I kind of just wanted to put it off a little more, because I have been putting off that book. I started it years ago, and I didn't get very far in, because the writing style, it just didn't click with me at the time. But now that I've gotten more into kind of like the adult fantasy and the high fantasy, I am very excited for it. It's one of those books where I've heard literally nothing but great things about it. So I cannot wait to get into that one. So that'll be my audiobook for tomorrow. After that, um, like I said, on the 25th, I do plan on doing um, The Hobbit for Tolkien Day. And I'm very, 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 very excited. I love that book and I've, I've read it dozen times and I've never listened to the audiobook so I'm very excited for that so there we go that is my little update for today I will check in with you tomorrow bye hey loves here with a quick Thursday update I totally did not update on Wednesday for the simple fact that I forgot all day long I kept saying I was going to update because I started a new book and I am so in love with it and I was so excited to talk about it and then uh, next thing I know, I'm laying down and after I took a shower and I was going to bed and I'm like, oh man, I totally forgot to film, didn't I? So we're here with a Thursday update. Um, Today is the 25th and that is Tolkien Reading Day. I am so excited for this. I ended up doing an audiobook to celebrate. So I had to put my book that I started on Wednesday on pause and then I rocked my Lord of the Rings shirt today. But it was just a really cool seeing everybody kind of posting all of their Tolkien books and everything and me with my lovely collection and everything. So yes. Um... So we'll start off with Wednesday. Um, I started The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. Um, this is a book that has been on my shelf for years and years. And I started it quite a few years ago. I only got about five pages in and it was during a really bad reading slump. So I never picked it up. I kind of honestly forgot about it. Since getting so heavy into the book community, um, I've been seeing it pop up a lot now. And I'm like, you know what? It's time to give this a try again. And I did. And let me tell you, I love everything absolutely everything about this book. I'm about 60% done 
and it is five stars. It's been five stars from the beginning. I am doing the audiobook this time around, and let me tell you, the audiobook is amazing. The narrator is so freaking good. The voices he does is just perfect. Um, they, it seems to fit every single character. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It's just, it's great. Um, we're following the story of a young man. Um, we start off when he's a kid, and we get until he's older, um, named uh, Locke Lamora. He is an orphan, and he is taken in by this group. I teach kids how to still, and Locke is really, really, really good at it. Um, he is a total con artist. Even from a young age, he comes up with these super elaborate stories to con people out of money and everything. Um, he ends up breaking a secret truce um, by accident, and he ends up getting a death mark put on him, and he his... Um, caretaker whose name is uh, he's known as the thief maker ends up selling instead of killing him he ends up selling him off to this man named Chains who runs this kind of religion based around thieving and it is so cool and he takes them in and he teaches them how to be a, car, a con artist of like the highest caliber he teaches them how to be gentlemen and everything they are called the gentle ambassadors that's the name of the series is the gentle ambassador series um he teaches them how to be gentlemen and how to be able to fit into different groups and everything and it is so cool i love anything to do with con artists or heists or anything like that and this has both in there and it's just so well written um the other thing i'm surprised how much i like it is the fact that it is a fantasy but there is basically no magic it's very very minimalistic magic and i'm loving it but the characters are wonderful the audiobook like i said if you are able to do audiobooks i fully on recommend it it is just phenomenal um but i am cannot wait i just got to i have laughed out loud so many times i did not know this book was going to be as funny as it was um so i have laughed out loud quite a few times i got to a part that literally just like tore my heart out and i'm like oh my goodness no so like what else and i'm not even done so i'm like what else is gonna happen but i i love this so much um so after putting off this books for so many years and already owning a copy did I turn, without even finishing the book, did I already turn around and buy um, a special editions of this and the two other books? Yes, yes I did. The other thing, let me point out, that I did not know is the fact that people have been waiting years and years and years for the fourth book. Um, the reason why I have not read um, The Name of the Wind is because I know people have been waiting years and years and years for the third book. And the reason why I haven't started Game of Thrones is because people are waiting years and years and years for the last book. So what did I do? I got into a series and did not know that this is another one that's like that. Um, so today for Tolkien Day, I decided that I was going to do the audiobook for The Hobbit. Um, I have read The Hobbit multiple times. I've read it probably around five or six times or more. I tend to read it yearly. Last year was the first year I didn't actually read it. I kind of just, I forgot about it with a whole getting into booktube and trying to like read all these other books that I kept hearing about. So I wanted to do the audiobook. There are different versions of the audiobook. There is one read by Rob Inglis. Um, I had a lot of people say that that one just, he doesn't do the voices of the dwarves very well. So I didn't go with that one. I, there is a, a bridge dramatization um, version as well. It's only about four hours. Um, I didn't go with that one because I'm not a huge fan of the abridged versions. I do want to listen to it. Since I listen at two times speed, I'll finish in two hours. So I think sometime this year, just randomly, I'll probably give it a listen because everyone said it's really, really good. Um, I ended up going with the one that was made um, in 2020, um, Andy Serkis. The voice of Gollum does it, and let me tell you, oh my god, it is so good. Uh, the guy is an amazing voice actor. He is the voice of Gollum. So, when we get to the scene in The Hobbit where we meet Gollum, to actually hear his voice is just holy crap, it added this whole other level to the audiobook um, and to the story. But his voices for all of the characters is so well done. And, um, The Hobbit is one of the very few books that have actually made me cry. And I, I cried the very first time I read it. And then all the other times after that, it, I, it didn't pack the punch anymore because I already knew it was coming. Hearing Andy Serkis's narration at the end of the book, when we get to 
the heartbreaking scene near the end, but the amount of emotion that Andy Serkis put into that scene had me just like, I, I had to pull my leg. I was on the train. I had to pull my legs up to my freaking eyes because I thought I was, I was starting to tear up. I was getting emotional again. But yeah, it was just wonderful. I love it. And of course, I had to show off my, my new edition that I just love so much. I had a great two days reading so far. Um, since I ended up pausing my TBR to listen to The Hobbit and I ended up taking all day because I had a kind of odd day today. Um, I'm a little behind. Um, I am reading A Map of Days right now uh, physically because I'm kind of just struggling with A Map of Days. I don't know what it is. I'm liking it, but it's kind of just kind of slower in the beginning right now. I can't get very far into it. And I just keep getting distracted. Um, so I, I started Gods of Jade and Shadow and I am really liking it. So I don't know. I might. I kept saying I wasn't going to do it. But I might go with the audiobook for this one and then read um, Gods of Jade and Shadow. So I might actually switch over to the audiobook for this one and this will be my next audiobook. Um, so I only have those three books, but Lies of Lakamura I will finish tomorrow. I might get into the Map of Days audiobook wise if I can get a copy of it um, from Libby or one of my many apps that I have. Um, and then Gods of Jade and Shadow. I think I'm going to read that one physically because I started it. I got curious and I started like kind of reading it and I'm loving it. It is told like a fairy tale. So after that though, I might actually have some time and I don't know what I'm going to read. I might get in a graphic novel or something, but yeah, there we go. There is a not so quick update, but I am covering two days. So I will check in with you guys probably tomorrow so I can tell you my thoughts on the lies of Locke Lamora because I am so excited to see what's going to happen because my heart just got like ripped out of my chest and I'm ready for more. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Happy Tolkien day. Um, I will check in tomorrow. Bye. Hey loves here with a quick Friday update. Um, I ended up finishing the lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch and just like I said, it was a five star all the way through. I loved everything about this. The characters are amazing. The relationship the characters have are amazing. The narrator was phenomenal for the audiobook. Um, the story was great. The whole heist con artist and everything going on was so good. And then the extra plot. I don't want to give too much away. Like this, I didn't know at all really what to expect from this. And I loved it. I loved how funny it was. I was cracking up like the entire time while, uh, what you call it, while listening to this. And it even like broke my heart in parts. Like it was just so good. I'm so mad. I waited so long. I can't wait to get into the second book now. Uh, I got to put a hold in for the audiobook on the library because I need to like finish this because I love it. But like I said, I'm really, really bummed to find out that the fourth book has been coming out for like years now. So not too happy about that, but I did. I loved this. Honestly, I would be fine. Like I want to know what else is going to happen. Um, but I would be fine. Like if I was just to read this and then like leave it off until like the next book comes out, whenever that happens. Um, it gave a really good solid ending, but since it is a series, it does have like that open ending to it. But at the same time, it felt like I'm satisfied with what happened and I could go a while without reading the second book, but I'm, like, so just into this. And, like I said, I'm in love with the characters and everything. Um, and all the twists and turns that were going on. It was just so much fun. I fully on 100% recommend this. Like I said, it was five stars from start to finish for me. I It's been a while, I think, since I just absolutely loved a book, like, this much. Like, I just... Oh, not even. I lied. At the beginning of the month when I read the fifth season, which blew my mind. And I can't wait to get into the second book of that one. But yeah, um, I didn't have that many five stars this month. Um, my wrap up's going to be kind of odd because I usually have quite a few five stars and I really didn't this month. So I think that's why it just felt like it's been a while since I've had like a solid five stars is because I think I want to say that uh, fifth season was the last five star. I'm not sure though. I got to go over my, my books again when I do my wrap up. But yeah fully on recommend. I loved every single thing about this. Um, so that was my audiobook I was working on. Um, I had a kind of odd day. I was, I was busy for a good half of my day. And then once like 1130 hit, well, not even 1130 because I went on lunch. So like 
by 11 o'clock almost, I was completely done with everything I had to do. So my boss is literally like, why don't you go down into the terminal and you can like take a nap? Because there's really, there was nothing for me to do. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. So I went downstairs. That's when I was finishing off of, what you call it, Liza Lacamora. And then I also picked up Gods of Jade and Shadow, which I'm going to be reading physically. Um, I'm about, what, 60 pages in. I am loving this. I really like the way it's told. Um, this is definitely a book that I think a lot of people might have an issue with the way it's written because it is written like a classic fairy tale. So it's got that kind of disjointed, choppy writing. But when it comes to fairy tales, I love that there's just something raw about it that just like sucks me into the story. And it's very much that. I am curious about the audiobook, but I am going to stick with reading this one physically. Um... We are following the character, um, she is a young girl named Cassiopeia. Um, her father has died and her mother came from a very well-off family, but she married her, um, Cassiopeia's father, um, without approval from her parents. So she was kind of like cut off. Um, her father dies and her mom has to kind of crawl back to her dad to, you know, beg forgiveness and they're treated very much like uh household staff and like they, they they do all the work around the house while her aunts and uncles and cousin just sit around and don't do anything um and boss her around uh so she's she does compare herself to cinderella but at the same time she says you know what i'm not like her because i know i'm going to do better for myself um that she's not going to be wishing upon a star to, for uh her life to get better that she'll figure it out I really like her character. She's a very, like, headstrong, you know, young girl. Um, this does take place in Mexico, which I absolutely love that. It features um, um, Mexican um, and Mayan gods. It is so... I'm loving it, though. The world is just so interesting and everything. Um, I don't have that much to, to do at work tomorrow, so I'll probably be reading this most of the day. Um, for my next audiobook, I was going to do this one physically. I... I'm kind of mad that I am going to do an audiobook of it, but I know I probably won't get done with it in time between the two of them, and I only have a few days left in the month. So I am going to be doing the um, audiobook for A Map of Days. Um, what really got me to switch over to the audiobook is I'm really having a... I'm struggling with this. I'm just not care. I'm not connecting the way I did with the... I wasn't a huge fan of the first book is what it is. Uh, it was a fun, fast-paced read that I read. I read it when I, like, first came out. It was a long time ago. Um, and the second one was the one I really, really enjoyed. And I really did like the third one, except the ending. Um, I'm struggling with this one. It's just starting off really slow and we're getting very heavily tropey right now. So I'm struggling with it. So I have started the audiobook. Um, I just picked up the audiobook for wherever I got to in this. As you see, I'm not that far in. I was on page 100 or so. So yeah, I'm going to switch over to the audiobook. So these are my last two books that I have for the month. Um, not sure how this is going to play out. So take care and I will probably check in with you guys tomorrow. I should because I am most likely going to be finishing this at work tomorrow audiobook wise as soon as I get to work. Do what I got to do and then the rest of my day will be dedicated to reading this. So yeah, I will check in later. Bye. <music>here with a quick Saturday update. I had a quite a productive reading day. Um, I started off my day literally not doing anything. So I made more progress in Gods of Jade and Shadow. And I was I am loving this book so much. It is seriously just like a fairy tale. I love the writing in it because it is just written like an, like I said yesterday, like an old school, like an original classic fairy tale. It's that very choppy writing where things kind of just happen and they're not really explained. And I just, I love it. There's something about this. It's just so freaking magical. And then the backdrop of Mexico in the freaking 20s with like the height of the jazz era and everything. We're finally getting more of that right now. Um, I love our main character, um, Cassiopeia. She is absolutely wonderful. She's strong. She's especially headstrong. I love that. Like, she's dealing with um, the death god 
having her, like, she stands up to him. Like, he's literally, like, a god of death. And she still gives him attitude and stuff. And I love it. She's so strong in what she she knows about herself. And she's still learning, though, about herself. And I am just loving this. The world is just beautiful. Everything about this is so good. I am going to hopefully finish this over my weekend. I really want to get this in and finish reading it. I... I think as soon as I finish this vlog, I might kind of just like lay down and read this some more because I am hooked. And then I kind of got a little, had to do stuff at work. So I ended up putting on the audiobook for A Map of Days. I ended up finishing this today. Um, I went with three stars. Um, this is very much, since this is, this is technically the fourth book in a, in the series, but this is the first book in like the new arc of the series like we're basically kind of starting all over with you know what our characters are now doing and setting up for the next I guess couple books I think there's counting this one there's three more now so I think it's six books in total but yeah I'm everything about this felt very fillery and setting up for you know what what, what has to come um and like I said with the romance it's very very heavy-handed with the whole um Emma is still in love with Jacob's grandpa and then she's dating Jacob. So it's very creepy. Like it's just like they never, uh, Ransom Riggs never like hit it. But in this book, it's so heavy in there. Like they keep mentioning his grandpa and how she's still in love with him while she's making out with Jacob. So it's very, very creepy. Like I'm not liking it. I hated the romance so much in here. And then we had to get like the unnecessary drama going on. And then, like I said, we're setting up for like, I guess the next book. I'm really excited for the next book. I love everything that was set up in here. For a book that is this long, not that much important really happens. Like I said, everything is just kind of like, okay, okay. I'm really glad I switched over to the um, the audiobook for this because I don't know. I would probably really, really struggle through most of this as um, reading it physically because I just, I kept kind of losing focus when I was listening to the audiobook. That's how I know when I'm not really enjoying it is if I start losing focus because usually I'm pretty good. I even was able to go up to almost three times speed on this because the narrator was like really, really slow. Um... But yeah, the uh, the pictures in here are really cool. I ended up going through most of them and looking. I went through all of them and looked at them, and they're really cool. I really love the way he ties the pictures into the actual plot. Like, that takes a lot of planning, and it's really cool the way he does do it. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Um, I ended up finishing that really pretty fast. Like, this, um, even when I was listening to it at uh, the two times speed before I bumped it up to the 2.5, um, it moves really, really fast. So, like I said, I got through this really quick. So when I finished that, I still had things I had to do at work. Um, I got really busy at the last part of my day. And um, I kind of went on Scribd and I looked for, I managed to find some uh, signal. And I was able to download an audiobook. Um, I have been really curious about this book because it deals with one of my absolute favorite subjects. And that is Tender the Flesh by Augustina Vizetica. I totally probably butchering her name. I'm so sorry. Um, this has to do with in like a kind of future where all of the animals on the planet get this disease and they have to be killed off. They all die. You cannot consume the meat anymore or you'll get sick and die from it. So they have to get rid of all animals and um, people still really want meat and they end up turning humans into cattle. Um cannibalism if you don't know is one of my absolute like favorite type of subjects I just find it so interesting and I always have I became obsessed with it when I was pretty young and I watched Silence of the Lambs for the first time um it's just one of those things like it's so taboo but I love it so much like if you don't know I have an entire wall of my bedroom dedicated to the show Hannibal um but yeah, I love the subject. So I was going into this with pretty high expectations. And then if you look up reviews, like people were so either grossed out by this that they couldn't finish it or people were going vegan because of how disgusting they found this book. So I went in like with the highest of the high expectations. I was ready to be like grossed out. And then the fact that I was listening to it at work. And if you don't know, I work in a kitchen uh, where we do cook meat. So I was like, okay, I'm ready. Let's let's gross me out, man. I'm gonna get sick at work. This is gonna be freaking cool. This book was absolutely terrible. I went with one star. It is so heavy handed. Um, this book is the equivalent of getting screamed at by a PETA protester and then getting smacked over the head with a brick that says meat is murder. 
on it. Like, that's all it is. Like, when I was, when I first started listening to it, almost immediately, I'm like, this author's a vegan. I know this author's a vegan. Soon as I had a chance, I looked it up, and yes, the author is a vegan. It comes off like that. It's very preachy and judgmental to people that eat meat. Um, Also, this book makes no goddamn sense at all. Like, the animals all get sick and die off or get killed off, and almost immediately, like literally within a month, the entire entirety of society just turns to cannibalism. Um, And the thing is, they have the technology and the science to make humans closer to cattle. Like they like cut out their vocal cords. They um, genetically enhance them so they are closer to meat and like more like cattle and less like human. So you're telling me you can genetically engineer people to be closer to cattle, but you can't make synthetic meat. Really? Really? That, that's what we're going with here. I was just like, what the hell? Like the entire, like the whole opening of this is literally just the meat process, like of killing the cows, processing them, what happens to them. That's all it is. It's like reading like a pita brochure is what it is. And as someone who once made the dumbass decision to get, because I wanted the cute little stickers that PETA used to send out, like the, I'm, uh, I'm not a nugget and it has like a picture of a, of, of a chicken. Um, I'm a meat eater. Let me tell you that I love meat. I will never give up. I love chicken. Like I can't not, not eat chicken. Like it's my favorite meal. And I love cheese. Like I will literally die before I give up cheese. So yeah, being a vegan is literally not something that I will ever, I've never even been interested in it. Um, like I understand people that do, I have no judgment on you, you know, good on you. I'm, you know, I congratulate you for being able to make such a hard, you know, kind of choice and everything, especially with such a heavily meat society that we are. Um, But I don't feel anybody should be preaching any which way. Like, if you don't want to eat meat, don't eat meat. If you do want to eat meat, then eat meat. Like, nobody is better than the other. Like, you don't get to stand on any high ground either which way. Um, This book is very much vegans are the greatest people on the planet. And meat eaters, you're basically just a murderer. And you should be killed. And you, like, rape cattle is basically what this whole entire book is about. Um, Yeah, if you can't tell, I was very just like, hmm. Because like I said, the whole beginning of the book is literally just the meat process. As someone who works in the food industry, um, you can't be squeamish if you're not working, you know, if you work in a, you know, an establishment that does serve every kind of thing. Like we have chicken on the menu, but we also have a vegetarian option. So, you know, I see like both sides of it. Like, you know, you do you. Yeah. But this whole book is just preachy. It is just the author preaching at you and describing how the meat industry is terrible. And then it's super heavy handed with like the underlining um, theme is, you know, as a society, we still consume each other. It's just, no, no, just no. And then this isn't a book where you will like any character. There is no character you're going to connect with. You're not going to like them. Even the main character he, you know, has gone through something tragic and he's dealing with that and he's morally guessing he's now a vegan or a vegetarian. He's not a veg- vegetarian for the most part. He eats. And that's the other thing. Um, there is nothing stopping like vegetables and stuff like that's still heavily people still eat it it's just as a society everybody needed meat we all needed meat so we started eating humans because we can't live without our meat but like I said it's so like just automatic like everyone goes from oh my god I need meat now so within a month we're all just turning to cannibalism like dude they have like beyond meat and stuff and this book was only written I think like last year so it's like you have these other options. Like, I'm pretty sure 90% of the world would be fine switching over to, you know... I, I mean, if it came to the fact that we ran out of animals, um, yeah, I, I could switch over to fucking fake meat. Like, I'm not gonna die if I have to eat it. Like, it's... Like, we'll make it longer than a month without meat as a society. Like, we're not gonna just turn over to eating babies and stuff like that. Like, this freaking book, if you can't tell... This book just irritated the hell out of me. Uh, Like I said, I went with one star. Um, The only reason I didn't DNF it is because I had no other option. I would have had to just listen to music because I didn't have anything saved to my phone because I expected uh, Map of Days to last a little longer. But yeah, this Tender Tender is the Flesh is just... 
what the hell, man. But as of now, I have no audiobooks to listen to for the rest of my time, and I'm hopefully going to finish this this weekend. So I have, I will have quite a few days with absolutely no TBR, because I will have finished my TBR. So I am just going to grab whatever the hell I want. So yeah, but there we go. There is my quite long <laughs> update, because that damn book, I just... Ah, uh, that damn book. That This book was a disappointment. So I had a very kind of disappointing day, but I'm going to go read... Gods of Jade and Shadow, and absorb an amazing book, because like I said, I'm absolutely just loving everything about this right now. So I will check in with you guys maybe tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>I as as a running theme with me um but yeah i am so excited to get into this more i'm loving it and you know how much you know like my most uh exposure to norse mythology i will not lie is through the thor movies from marvel which is not accurate in the least bit but yeah um i'm really liking this i want to see where a lot of this comes from and everything so i know a lot too like like you know over the years kind of like absorb some of it from other places but yeah I cannot wait to get into this more I'm loving it so much um so there we go um after that though like audiobook wise I'm kind of just going fast and loose and doing whatever the hell I want for the rest of the month until it's over I do have to film my birthday book haul 
I believe all of my books have came in. I'm pretty sure they all did. So I can finally do that. And then I also got to do my April TBR, um, which I'm excited for since I just kind of figured out what I'm going to be doing and everything. So yes, um, as always, I'm Bobby. I will drop all those social media links down below. Give this a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and happy reading. Bye.